So, a truckload of cantaloupe? Yeah. Yeah, I can understand maybe one, but a truckload? Yeah, that that dog is never going to be the same. Oh, hi! Hi! I'm Will Gray. Sir Michael of Gray. And we're from the Knights of Gray. Today, we're going to be talking about attack zones, danger zones, and how they work. First thing you need to know is what an attack zone and a, and a danger zone are. Funny enough, an attack zone and a danger zone is just the opposite of each other's from the opponent's point of view. My attack zone would be his danger zone. His attack zone would be my danger zone. So let's talk about these zones and what they are. An attack zone is the area in which you can hit. For example, unless I move, Mike here is out of my attack zone. I can't reach him unless I move. So he is out of my, of my danger zone. He knows he's safe. He's in no danger. His attack zone probably starts right about here. He can barely touch me. I'm right on the border of his attack zone. Attack zone. Attack zone. Now, this is where a fight actually starts. Both people just in each other's attack zone, barely. Now, most people, when they first start a fight, they touch swords and then back up just a little bit, putting both people into a safe position. Now, if you want to attack your opponents, you have to enter his attack zone. Say it with me. Attack zone. Very good. Now, with this attack zone, you get to move your attack zone into his danger zone and his into yours at the same time. Now, take an, take an advance forward. I take an advance forward. Now, both of us can hit each other at the same time. Oh, well. Now you have to start paying attention, and this is where the fight really begins. So, in the last episode, you watched Mike being able to move with me as I moved while we were doing basic one through four hits. Now, what he was doing during this time is besides paying attention to what swing I was doing, he was paying attention to his danger and attack zones and making sure that I didn't move too far in. Because when I move too far in, that means I'm dangerous. So he kept me at bay and moved with it. So when I attack, he takes a step back as well. This isn't because he's running, it's because it's a tactical cool retreat keeping me on the edge of his danger zone as well. Now we're going to talk about the other zones that you have while fighting. Every joint that you have in your body can be used to describe one of your attack zones. For example, a shoulder suggests that I can attack within this area. An elbow allows me to attack within this area as well. If I use my wrist, I can now attack within all of this area at the same time. That's just my arm. That's amazing. You also have your hips, your knees, your ankles, your toes that you can all use to decide exactly where that weapon's going to strike. So if you're going to start buffer fighting, you have to learn about how your own body moves. Funny enough, for example, your elbow bends this way but it doesn't bend that way. So if your arm is in this position and you want to strike, you're going to have to turn more than just that elbow to hit. You'll have to rotate your wrist and shoulder so you can bring your hand around a new way. Isn't that amazing? So, using that, plus if you'd watch episode two, using the 10 basic strikes, movement and understanding of how your body moves to allow a strike to happen, you'll be able to attack from any point anywhere. Isn't that great? So, this is Will Gray. And Sir Michael of Gray. And we're from the Knights of Gray. And we'll see you soon. And remember, keep buffering. So, how's that dog? He's doing a little better, but still not the same.